<laughs> Did you feel your hand floating? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hey guys, my voice a little funny from day three of bad allergies, but I think it's time to show you how I pick out my next book and I how I use my spidey senses to feel out what the next book is gonna be. And I obviously try to find the next five star book. That's kind of every reader's dream is to find the next book they can obsess over with all their life. So let's see how we should do this. We have this one, which Catherine Center herself actually sent me, which is crazy. But this book doesn't actually come out until May, which is in like five months. That's crazy. And the reason I think this would be five stars is because I read these two books by her and they were both five star books. And then I also read this book by her and it was 4.5 stars. So why would this not be a five star? That's kind of my thinking here. I don't even know what this is about though. So that probably is important. Should we try it out? I think I'll give it a few chapters tonight. Let's see how that goes. I need a tissue. I've been reading this book. I'm 145 pages in and I'm obsessed with her writing. This is my fourth book by her and my reaction every time is the same. I start on page one. Before you know it, I'm on page 10. I'm hooked into the story. I already care about the main characters. I'm already laughing. I'm already scared at what emotional heartstrings are gonna be pulled. And she really makes you do zero work as a reader. It's just so easy to read and it flows so nicely. And they're so happy-go-lucky. I feel like in the same way that I'm a huge fan of Lynn Painter. Both of their writing styles are super kind of outrageously funny, like scenarios that are pretty unrealistic, but it's a book and it's fiction and it's just fun. But they still throw things in there that are very real life, very sad, but they balance it out so well that you don't even really notice and you don't mind. We're following Emma. She writes screenplays and her ex-boyfriend pairs her up with this mega famous screenwriter, script writer, I don't really know, who wrote a terrible rom-com script because he's not used to writing rom-coms. So she comes in and is supposed to to help him out but he does not want her help because he's super famous and he never works with other people and she has almost nothing on her resume because she spent most of her life taking care of her father at home and yeah it's silly and fun and I'm having a great time it's a great distraction from my face being in the depths of right now so I'm gonna keep reading oh my gosh my voice is gone remember when I just said a few hours ago that yeah there are some sad things in her books but they're so happy overall that you don't even care I retract that statement I've been fooled again into thinking everything was gonna be happy-go-lucky this time. It never is. Catherine Center will make you laugh out loud, and then on the next page, make you face all the emotional things in your life that you've been reading fiction books to avoid. Why have you done this, Catherine? I wasn't even at the sad part yet. That's crazy. <laughs> I randomly one morning had the urge to reorganize my bookshelf, so that is what happened. But it's been three days since I finished the rom-commers and I wanted to give myself some time to see if it was a five star because I think one of the biggest indicators that something is a five star is how long you think about the characters past reading the book or if you just fully forget the plot and the people immediately. Unfortunately, I don't think I've thought about the characters that much. Potentially the vibes of the male main character I've thought about because it is a good vibe that I want to read more of in books. I have been thinking about how much this book made me want to sit down and read the entire thing and not check my phone, which is really hard to do nowadays. So for those reasons, it's giving like a 4.5 or 4.75 star vibe, which is so close to five stars. So, 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 so close. And that could easily get changed to five stars if in the future I continue thinking about it. But as of now, I have not been and it's more of a 4.5. So my five star prediction was wrong, but I feel like my little spidey senses are good still. I still have a good instinct so far. Up next, you guys probably did not see this coming, but a long time ago, I read the Akatar series, and then when I got to A Court of Silver Flames, which is the last book in the series so far, I got 270 pages in and then put it down. It's been like a year and a half, I think. Here's where I put them on my shelf now, but I never had plans of continuing this until in my previous video. I just read her third series, Crescent City, and the third book comes out in like 10 days now. And so I thought to round things out, I need to finish this series just in case I need to know anything in this 
series. I don't know how many books this series is gonna be, but this was the only book holding me back from saying that I've read all of her books. And it has a very high probability of being a five star because the rest of the series is a five star. It just was the spiciest one of all of them and I just wasn't in the mood for that, so I put it down. I'm gonna just try my best to skip over them and get the completed plot of this series. Or potentially not finished plot, I don't know what's going on. Good morning guys. I woke up to fresh flowers at my doorstep because Destiny and Sarah sent them to me for hitting 3 million subscribers, which is insane. Look how cute these are. Thank you, Sarah and Destiny. They're literally angels. They're so thoughtful and so good at gift giving. It's crazy. Thank you for 3 million subscribers. Kind of crazy, kind of random. Didn't ever think I would hit this milestone when I made this channel when I was like 10 years old. So thank you so much. I love our little book corner of the internet. And these are so cute. I feel like I should just have them. Actually, my aunt got me this clear book thing that you're supposed to put water in and then put a flower in. BRB, actually, I might do that. I'm just gonna say it now, that was not a five star read. At least I can now say I've read this entire series. I think this is the first time I've read every single book a author has published, which is crazy. My critique of it is that for some reason, Sarah J Maas got very overexcited with the chemistry between the two characters in this book. And I feel like she was just in her office getting carried away with the spice scenes. I don't know if people were egging her on from the few spice scenes we get in, honestly, mostly the second book. I feel like the third book is like mostly war and not even really that, but she just went to town. And if we could just cut out like this middle 300 pages, start with the beginning where we're getting our character Nesta. She starts in a really hard place and she's shunning everyone from her life. And then she starts training for something fun. That could have been a really cool plot. Just get to the plot of that and get to her character development but all of this middle stuff is just her doing the same thing day in and day out. So many spy scenes. And then once we get through all of that, suddenly in the last like 50 pages of the book, it's the entire plot. If this was like a 300 page book, it would be amazing. But because of how it was paced and like how she got so carried away, I feel like by the time we actually got to the really exciting plot points, I just didn't care. Like I wanted the book to be over because I was kind of just sick of them at that point. So that's pretty disappointing. I feel like if you just wanted like a more romancy fantasy book then you'll really enjoy this one but the whole reason this series is so good is because there's so much plot that's so exciting but you also get the romance that's amazing as well but it doesn't interfere or take away from the plot now we're like five days away from the third book in the crescent city series to come out so i've set myself up and prepared myself for that launch date and for that i feel good and settled and everything what should i read next before i choose my next book i present to you a goaded method to choosing your next book and that is book of the month because they're sponsoring this video and I am actually personally subscribed to them but what I mean is that you don't have to do any of the work in choosing your next read because they have a bunch of people reading books and then choosing their favorites and this is actually how I discover tons of authors I would have never known about for example this month I chose The Resort by Sarah don't even know how to say her last name because I I've never seen her before but I know I'm probably gonna love this book this is one of their thrillers but they have a bunch of different categories and genres they're really nice 
as hardcovers and they actually also have audiobooks now that you can choose which is so nice because i've been obsessed with audiobooks it comes in this blue box with its bookmark i have the app so at the beginning of each month when they announce all of their picks it's really easy to just go through it click that one or you can skip for free and i'm actually going to read a book of the month book in this video just naturally because i actually just really really love them so if you guys want to try it you can actually get your first book for 9.99 which is crazy because they're hardcovers and use the code smooch because it's february so i'll leave that link in the description thank you book of the month for sponsoring this video i love you guys so much i feel like i've been seeing this book all over instagram and people really like it it's like a serial killer romance the viral friends to lovers dark romantic comedy full of murder chaos and sizzling chemistry this looks kind of fun butcher and blackbird by bryn weaver might have to start this <laughs> Consider this a sneak peek of something that's hopefully releasing in February. But anyways, I started this book yesterday and about 30 pages in, I started spiraling because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this book, but I have no idea what other book in my library I would wanna read. Nothing sounds good, which means I could be entering a book slump. So later that night, I just picked up this book again and I went from 30 pages to 150 in one sitting. I don't think I've sat and read for that long in a long time. So the fact that this book had the ability to do that is a very good sign. The reason I was freaked out at first is because she starts off in like a jail cell type of thing next to a dead body and it's so graphic and gross and descriptive and disgusting. And then this other guy comes in who is also what I'll be calling an SK which is this right here, just in case YouTube doesn't like that word. She's an SK, he's an SK, and they're kind of meeting each other for the first time in the prologue. This is definitely one of those romance books that uses more crass, is that the word? Crass language, like more cursing, all that sort of stuff, but it's also unique in the sense that it has two murderers as the protagonist, which is kind of fun. Every chapter she starts off, you're immediately intrigued. You want to find out what she's talking about. And I'm really excited to get back to it. I really like the chemistry forming between the two main characters right now. I'm putting the surprise item back into the book that you will see next month. I have another surprise item that I'm censoring. And now I'm going to go to a cute little local bookstore, read this book, maybe shop around. Still a billion miles from you. finished this book and I've been sitting on the review for a second. I think this book has three main aspects to it and I only really enjoyed one of them and that one aspect is the actual romance that takes place in this book. I feel like it was done very well but the other two aspects are the gore of the murder scenes and the spice scenes. Picture me reading this in public, right? Let me just sit down so you can get a visual. I'm like at a coffee shop and I'm like, oh, okay, this is a spice scene. Let me just skip over it. Usually, takes that much. Two pages, I'm done, keep reading. This is how long it went on for. pages. I was flipping for 30 pages. Like people in the coffee shop probably were like, why does this girl just skip half of her book? What's going on? And then after that point, it continued to happen pretty frequently. So if you like really graphic murder scenes and spice scenes, you'll love this book. I, however, don't enjoy that in my reading, but the romance was so good. Like I think the author is very good at her job. <laughs> I think she did the romance in an amazing, convincing way. And I do think there was tons of emotional buildup before she added the spice scenes, which I still appreciate. You know, I might change my rating. At first I was giving it four stars because I also read it so fast and I haven't done that in a while But we'll see. I think it's like a 3.75 or a 4 and to be fair at the beginning of the book There's a whole list of trigger warnings and I just thought I would rise above them all It turns out maybe I am a little bit more squeamish when I read. I don't know 
So after that experience, I was like, let me think about what do I as a reader actually enjoy? Because sometimes I feel like I don't even know myself that well, which is kind of the whole point of this video is how well do I know my own reading taste and my intuition to lead me to a book that I will actually love. And I feel like a big theme is a romance book that is mostly like a women's fiction, literary fiction. The word women's fiction is kind of funny because it doesn't have to be just for women. And I feel like Annabelle Monaghan is the perfect example of this. She wrote this book, Nora Goes Off Script. And I loved this one. I gave it 4.5 stars. And it is very much a, not literary fiction, but like a more about the protagonist's life. And the romance is really sweet. And I think she like mostly skips over the spice scenes. So this book, which I have from her same time next summer, I wanted to give a try, but it's the dead of winter in January, but I'm really craving summer. So this is kind of perfect. I already made it 92 pages in and I didn't even mean to. I was just in bed last night and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm almost to page 100. So this is going very well. That's my mood because I finished this book and I just, I can't give it five stars. Which is a bad way to preface that I loved this book so much, but I think that's what's even more frustrating about this video is we had so many books come so close to five stars, but just weren't. This one, I thought it was gonna do it for me. I stayed up really late reading it. I got my pen out. I had to start underlining things. I even was writing in the book, which I haven't done in so long. Ugh, there was such a good plot twist in the book. I even wrote in the freaking book. Books this good literally give you this pit in your stomach until the main character makes the right choice and things are resolved for her. So true. No, this book really was so good. It made me feel so many things. It was giving me the heart clench, the stomach clench, because I wanted things to be right for the main character. I also wrote this in the margins. When she literally had to recover from him like he was an addiction. Rereading your own things that you write in the margins at like midnight is not, not a good thing to do. This book was amazing. It's very summery. You're following Samantha as she visits her hometown at the beach with her fiance, who is a doctor, who she's gonna get married to soon. But her childhood first love, Wyatt, is still living next door. And when I was reading some of the reviews of this book, a lot of them said that there just wasn't enough Wyatt and her fiance, who you know from the start of the book is like not right for her. He's just in the book too much, which I understand, but that's kind of the whole point is that she was fighting between who she wanted to be, which was like this clean cut wife of a doctor versus Wyatt who just likes to make music and lives at the beach. And I really, 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 really liked that storyline. Never a dull moment in this book. She kind of writes in short sentences and just gets to the point, which I love. And I think the reason it's not five stars is because when it does get to the romance parts, I don't want the sentences to be short anymore. I kind of want the writing to become more flowery and lyrical and dramatic and all of these monologues of, uh, I don't know what I want, but I think her writing is so amazing up until that point. And then I am left wanting a little bit more, but this is like a four, 0.5 star book, which again is crazy. So my five star radar seems to be off. I think it just goes to show that a five star book is this elusive thing that just comes to you at the exact right moment in your life. Who's to say I could have read one of these other books at even more perfect moment and then given it five stars because 4.5 is like a hair off of five stars, but that's the beauty of reading. Sometimes there's just this weird little magic that you can just, I've been reading for so long and I've read so many books and there, I don't have like a formula for what, what a book needs to give me that feeling. So it keeps you on your toes. But thanks for watching this video. Go follow me on Instagram for when I announce the launch of some very fun book products that I've been working on since last year. I am so excited to launch them guys, you have no idea. But until then, I will see you somewhere else on the internet. Bye.